In this video, we are going to cover the following topics. The new update by the European Medicines Agency on nitrosamines. And what is the enhanced AIMS test as described by EMA and how it differs from the standard AIMS test. The European Medicines Agency on 7 July 2023 published their updated guidance on nitrosamine impurities in human medicinal products. The link to the EMA guidance is provided in the description below. In this updated guidance, EMA has provided a Carcinogenic Potency Categorization Approach CPCA, for N-nitrosamines in order to set acceptable intake limits when robust in vivo data is not available. Apart from this approach, a GLP-compliant enhanced AIMS test for N-nitrosamines is described. This guidance is a game-changer and provides a breather to the pharmaceutical industry. For those who are not aware, N-nitrosamines fall in the cohort of concern, AI limit less than 1.5 micrograms per day, and all new N-nitrosamines for which in vivo tox data is not available had to be controlled at 18 nanograms per day which was a challenge. However, based on metabolism all nitrosamines do not fall in the cohort of concern, so setting 18 nanograms per day AI limit for all nitrosamines was not scientifically justifiable. Also, the AIMS test was not considered sensitive enough to detect the mutagenic potential of nitrosamines. So, what are the options? First, develop a control strategy in the manufacturing process or reformulate the product. However, this will increase the cost, it is time-consuming and will lead to potential delay in product launch. The second option is perform a read across. However, read across is a challenge and difficult for new NDSRIs. The third option is to carry out an in vivo mutagenicity study using transgenic rodents. However, only few CROs have the capability to carry out such studies and the slots are booked until 2025. The updated EMA guidance now describes the enhanced AIMS test with additional testing conditions in the standard AIMS assay making it more sensitive to detect nitrosamines. For audiences who want to learn more about N-nitrosamine can refer to our previous video, the link is provided above. We are going to talk about what these enhanced test conditions are and how does it differ from the standard AIMS assay. To understand this let us see what the standard AIMS assay or bacterial reverse mutation assay is. Salmonella typhimurium and Escherichia coli are bacteria which require an amino acid called histidine and tryptophan respectively, in order to grow, and these bacteria are biologically capable of synthesizing these amino acids. However, in the AIMS assay, Mutant strains of Salmonella typhimurium and Escherichia coli which are not capable of synthesizing the amino acids are used, hence they are not able to grow. If a test compound is mutagenic, it will react with the bacterial DNA and reverse this mutation making the bacteria capable of synthesizing the amino acids leading to growth of bacterial colonies. Now let's look at the procedure as per OECD guideline 471. At least five different strains of bacteria are used, depending on the type of mutation. Salmonella typhimurium TA1535 and 100 and TA102 along with Escherichia coli strain are for base pair substitution. Salmonella typhimurium TA1537 or TA97 and TA98 are for frame shift mutation. A minimal agar medium deficient of histidine or tryptophan is which the bacteria are cultured as required. In order to mimic the metabolism of a compound similar to what happens in the liver, a metabolic activation system is needed. The most common metabolic activation system used is S9 fraction from rats which contains all metabolizing enzymes. In the AIMS test, the bacterial strains are exposed to test compound both in presence and absence of the S9 fraction. Positive and negative controls are also used. There are two types of methods in AIMS test. Plate incorporation method and pre-incubation method. In the plate incorporation method, the test substance, bacterial culture and sterile buffer with or without S9 fraction are mixed with overlay agar and then poured onto the surface of minimal agar plate and incubated at 30 to 37 degrees Celsius. 
In the pre-incubation method, the test substance, bacterial culture and sterile buffer with or without S9 fraction are pre-incubated for 20 minutes at 30 to 37 degrees Celsius prior to mixing with the overlay agar and then poured onto the surface of minimal agar. If the test compound is mutagenic, the bacterial mutation is reversed and the bacteria grows in the plate which are known as reverted colonies. The number of revertent colonies are counted on negative, positive and test plates to arrive at a conclusion. What is enhanced AIMS test that EMMA guideline defines? Let's look at how it differs from the standard AIMS test. First, only the pre-incubation method should be used and not the plate incorporation. Second, pre-incubation time has been increased to 30 minutes from 20 minutes. Third, the metabolic activation system recommended is 30% rat liver S9 and also test in presence of 30% hamster liver S9. And finally apart from the usual positive control chemicals, 2N nitrosamines that are known mutagens need to be used. A negative result in the enhanced AIMS test allows control of N nitrosamines at 1.5 microgram per day. For substances testing positive, the guideline recommends establishing acceptable intake limits using the CPCA approach or read across method. This new updated EMA guideline is a big relief to the pharmaceutical industry which was struggling to derive AI limits for new nitrosamines. Thank you. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel Talks Gyan.